What is up, everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. And today I'm going to show you how I make poo cakes. The poo cakes are basically half pint jars, you know, as regularly used for BRF cakes to make BRF cakes with vermiculite, brown rice flour, and water. A very simple mix, very effective. But in this case, I'm going to be using a modified recipe involving poo. Uh, this, in this case, it's compost manure, and what I'm why I'm going to be adding poo is because uh, you know certain species of edible and medicinal mushrooms uh, will need poo to fruit. Now you know a lot of species can do with or without, but there are certain species out there, like for example the com common button mushroom that we buy in the supermarket. If you want to fruit those, they need poo to fruit. That's why I'm using a modified recipe. This recipe is not my own. This recipe I got from a guy called Mac Murden. He's a trusted cultivator on the Esmery, and he basically made this uh, recipe in around 2013. Now, the difference still with my tech, my poo cake tech, is that Mac Murden uses a modified shotgun fruiting chamber setup to fruit his poo cakes, whereas I really, really dislike shotgun fruiting chambers. And you know, these poo loving species, like exclusive poo species, have this reputation of being very finicky about fresh air exchange, about being about the moisture content, you know, humidity, all these things, you know, you can't directly mist them or something. And some of it is true. Actually, they're all true uh, to a certain extent about the misting part. But basically, I wanted to show you guys that it's you don't need a complex fruiting setup because a lot of people will just go with a Martha, right? Go with a, building a greenhouse to fruit these species. And, you know, my channel is all about keeping it simple, doing it properly, though right? No shortcuts. It's it's simple because we have a good understanding of why each step works, what, what the very essence of cultivation is, which is FAE, moisture content, proper surface conditions, understanding what that looks like, proper carrying capacity or below carrying capacity based on the conditions and per species, right? So as long as we have a good understanding of those fundamentals, we can do all sorts of things. And I want to show you guys that. By the way, this is experimental. Uh, so if you, if you really just want to get, you know, your agaricus mushrooms, your button mushrooms quickly, you know, your portobellos, then uh, this is not the video for you. But I promise you guys, this will work. I'm going to use a Ziploc bag to fruit it. And I got this idea from a guy called uh, Bodhisatta on, on the Esmeri as well, another trusted cultivator. And basically, he uses a plastic bag, a, a Ziploc bag to fruit cakes like this. Uh, different species, easier, not dung requiring species. This is a completely different species that I want to do. I want to do a traditionally more difficult species. So yeah, that's basically what I want to do. And I want to show you guys that it can be done. I know it's going to be able to be done. I know it will. Uh, if, if not with a particular bag on top setup, then I'm going to do a bag inside setup. I promise you guys, I guarantee it, it will work. It'll work. I'll make it work. Uh, I, it's not that I make it work. I just know that it will work. All right. Just got to fine tune the amount of misting, the amount of uh, air exchange and all that. But that's a given with any... Uh, species. For example, the, uh, the Mexican jumping mushrooms uh, that I made in my previous channel, that worked and nobody had done it before, right? Same concept, all right? Now, given those guys were not uh, dung-loving species, uh, they were grass-loving species, but I was able to do it and nobody had done that before. And that's also traditionally considered a more difficult to fruit species than the basic beginner gourmet and medicinal species like, you know, lion's mane and oyster mushrooms, all those. That's why you don't you don't hear people uh, cultivating those because you need a more complex setup. I just wanted to show you guys easily. And it was very successful. Now, unfortunately, I had to take that video down, right? I had to take all those videos down from my previous channel. Uh, so I haven't figured out at this point what I'm gonna do with the fruiting part, but I'm not gonna be showing you guys fruiting on YouTube because it is kind of it's kind of risky, uh, so I can't show you guys. So I'm gonna find another platform, maybe Patreon, maybe Rumble, whatever. So yeah, anyways, let's get to the video, okay? So what we need for this is basically a regular PF cake recipe, although modified. So we got one part brown rice flour. I'm just using one cup here, right? For every single thing, one part equals one cup. That'll make enough for five cakes. So we got one part BRF, we got one part vermiculite, and then we got one part compost manure. Now, although in this video, I only use one part of manure, I would actually recommend you put maybe one and a half parts or maybe one part manure and maybe half a part worm castings or something of that sort. Just experiment. You don't want too much manure. They really don't need that much manure. Having said that, if I could do it over again, I would add more manure because I'm using compost manure rather than straight up manure. And of course, one part water. So uh, hopefully you know how to make PF cakes. I'm going to make it. Obviously, you start out with a vermiculite first. There we go. And we start adding water. All right, so here we go. We're gonna moisten this vermiculite. As per the usual, just add a little water by a little water. 
Remember, always start with the vermiculite first. Get this to carrying capacity. Now, of course, the, the manure is actually a little more wet. This is completely dry. So, there, you know, this is why it's important to understand how to get to carrying capacity, understand how to get it, and be able to logically make everything of different moisture content, right? Because all these ingredients have a different moisture content. So, you know, some things need to be moistened, some things are exposed to much water. So, anyways, it's always good practice. Always start with a berm when you're making it. Feel a little, okay, could take a little more water. I'm just gonna add a little bit. Okay, that is plenty. Okay, guys, so I think this is pretty good, as you can see. See some water there? See that? That's good enough. So now I am going to actually, which one should I go with? I might start with the dung. Okay. So dungs were a little wet. Some of the dung was drier than the other parts. So, you know, you just gotta adjust. PF cakes in general. You wanna make sure that uh, you, you're not making clumpy, moist, like really wet, pasty, uh, sort of uh, substrates, it's it's better. When in doubt, drier the better. See, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And now here we go with the brown rice flour. Chock full of nutrients, guys. Just mix it up a little. You know, you don't want to do it all at once. Okay, so now it's a little too dry. So we are going to add a little bit of water. Now this is the part you want to be careful because it's a very fine line between just enough water and too much water. And I really mean a very fine line. So... Oh, whew. putting a little too much there. You want to do it little by little. You don't want to do what I did there because they will clump as you can see, but it's still fun because they will mix up very well as I'm doing right now. And as you can see, the clumps are lessening. Anyways, I'm gonna keep going through this process and I will get back to you guys. All right, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, it is mixed very well, but not too wet. Now, how do I know? I touch it, first of all, even with these gloves, I can feel the moisture. And here I squeeze it, right? See that? It clumps together. That means there's this moisture in there, but it also breaks apart very easily. See, it clumps up if you squeeze it, but then you could also easily break it apart. And as you can see, there's no big clumps. And if there are clumps, if I just touch it with a fork, generally it will just break apart without much effort. And that's uh, that's a good sign. So you could still see like the little flakes of the BRF. So now at this point, we're done. So making the mix, we're just gonna add it in as per regular PF tech. We're just gonna put it up until around here. And then on the top, we're gonna put dry vermiculite layer. So do that. I'm just gonna demonstrate one of them. Uh, just so you can see how loosely I actually put it in here, you do not really want to pack it in. That's why I'm using a fork, because a spoon has more of a tendency to sort of uh, compress, compact some of the stuff. With a fork, it's a little airier, just like we want the substrate. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, oh, you know, you're overthinking it, but it's never failed me. And as you can see, it's nice and loose, just the way we want it. And um, yeah, at the end, you just sort of want to tamp it down a little bit. You're not physically really putting pushing down on here. You're just sort of going like that. All right, guys, so I filled four jars, and this is the one last jar remaining, and I feel like I might have put a little too much in those jars. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this uh, quarter pint jar, right? These jars are very, very nice because it's got four inoculation holes as well. And for situations like this, it's very useful, but because it's got four inoculation holes, you put the same amount of liquid in it, right? So what that means is that it's gonna be twice as fast to colonize as those guys. So this is gonna be a little tester run, you know, this is gonna be like the little scout uh, and it will tell me what I can expect from those guys quicker. All right guys, so I filled them up and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, before I put in the dry worm, I always do this. I make sure I wipe the lid around the lid. You see like it's got some little pieces of brown rice and manure and all worm on there. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a little piece of paper towel and I'm just gonna go through it, through each jar so that uh, you want your, basically because you want your dry worm layer to be the contaminant free layer. If you have something that can contaminate something nutritious like a piece of manure or vermiculite, that's no good. So that's why I'm gonna just take them off. All right guys, so I'm back. I've been filled up with the dry worm layer. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna micropore these up, just one layer of micropore which isn't even really necessary. That's why you have the dry worm layer, but I like to be extra safe. And if I can control a variable, then I do my best to control it because it's a lot of time and effort that goes into this hobby, right? So no shortcuts, guys, just do the steps properly, as I keep saying. So 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna microport it up, put some foil on there, and put it in my Instant Pot for two and a half hours. So I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.